Welcome to Debt to Cinema. I'm Brian Gillis. And I'm Stephen Maltmanex. Like most people, we love going to the theater and catching the latest releases. However, you can sadly put a big dent in your wallet. Fortunately, living in the digital age makes the viewing possibilities endless from the comforts of home. Many of these films that you can see right from your couch, we're ashamed to say we miss, despite labeling ourselves cinephiles. So join us as one or both of us cross off a title from our list of shame. It can be an all-time essential classic. Or an underrated piece of cinema that's worth giving a shot. Hell, it might just be some trashy film we want the other's opinion on. So sit tight and join us as we pay off our debts, one dollar at a time. Tommy's gone. <laughs> it's hard to believe. It was a good idea not to let your little brother come to the funeral. Hey, I don't like this place. Something weird is going on up there. The funeral is about to begin, sir. <laughs> What's wrong with you? There's something up there. I saw it. You got some kind of an overactive imagination or something? I know you're not gonna believe this, but these things were here. Oh, give me a break. So you heard about this before. I know I had. I had no clue what the fuck it was. Um, did you see it on Twitter lately? Uh, my, my lady friend said there's a remake coming this year or something. There's a sequel that's out right now. Is it actually out? Yeah, like it's out. It's playing huh. at the Draft House. And it's it's a fifth installment, so obviously that's it's not That's what that I great. thought, yeah. Yeah, I, I said something during the screen. I was like, I think there's like four or five of these, which after seeing it now it seems really bizarre. Yeah, but the way that I heard about this was last year Bad Robot um, at the same time as they were releasing Star Wars they did a full on restoration on this. And oh cool. Straight up it looks fucking great like no arguments there it is a great looking movie for the budget that it is the restoration that they did on it I don't know if that's what you saw but it really really looks beautiful. That's the nicest thing I have to say about this <laughs> yeah. movie. Mine wasn't hideous, not film scratch or anything like that, but in terms of just effects, like, you know, cool gore is cool gore, but when the blood looks like shit, like, it, it well, just kind of turns me off a little bit. You know what, like, this has, from what I read anyway, like, this does have the reputation of being, like, one of those awesome gory flicks. It's just one fucking scene. It's one scene. But that it, one a fucking scene, amazing scene. It's, yes, it's like, really don't cool. get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's it. And like that that scene doesn't really make much like what the fuck is the point of that orb other than just to be there? I, like, I think maybe it's like a just a contemporary critic thing cuz this came out in 78, right? 78, 79. 79. So this is like 2 years before The Evil Dead. There as far as I can recall, there wasn't really gore gore back then cuz this Kind of, well, if you compare this to Halloween, yeah, this is pretty gory. And, but then, and then you the, also have Dawn of the mm -hmm. Dead, which I think was before this. Uh, you know, we even, we talked about, what was it, Bay of Blood uh, last year? Yeah, like exactly a year ago, I think it was. Oh, fun. At least your eye's okay this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I can didn't do... didn't have any uh, <laughs> orbs stabbed through it and spurting it, out blood. Not even, I, that wasn't even the eye, though. It was a forehead. That was the coolest part, because I was looking, I was thinking about it. It was pretty close. Like, I thought that was the eye, because it was very mm -hmm. close to that other eye, and you had the reflection. Of the right eye directly into it. This is what I was thinking about. You know how like there's that psychic early in the movie, and mm -hmm. she has that dot in the middle of her forehead. I'm pretty sure she got hit by the orb, and now she's wise because she survived or something. So it looks like this orb comes flying, fucks you up, drains out your life force. The blood's burdened all over the place, and then you become like this this slave for the tall man. Um, if which that's is... one way that it happens, <laughs> like, I I don't know what the fuck is happening. In I think this. it's a like... dream. That's so easy. <laughs> Come on. It's just because, okay, look, like it, it starts off a certain way. It starts off pretty weird, like kind of like Bay of Blood, actually, where mm -hmm. you just have like this really bizarre sex scene. Someone gets murdered, and then the movie starts. But how else do you explain that this main kid, the like the boy that's chasing around his brother the whole film, why is his brother dead at the end? How do you die? Because you have that really weird, almost like child molester scene right at the end where like the older brother's friend is like, yeah, let's go on a trip and we can do this, we can hang out, let me play some music for you, let's get out of here. Well, and we can jump into it right now if you want to talk mm -hmm. about the ending because that is the explanation here for literally everything. It's is a dream. That it's all a dream, but... Mm -hmm. Like, like Biggie said. So, A, that's that's one fuck you that this movie does. Um, but then the other one is that it does do that typical horror movie. Like, you know, it has to end on a jump scare or some it sort of shocking good, horror note. 
That Wait. final scene, that final little uh, shot is pretty but awesome. That, that explanation then makes no fucking sense to me. No. Like, when you have something like Carrie, you know, where the hand grabs that, like, the reason you have endings like that, it's not only so that you can have a jump scare or something to, like, leave an impression on the audience, mm-hmm. but, like, narratively, those are there because it's, like, it's that thing of, like, oh, you know, you think you won this out, you think you beat this thing, fuck you, you didn't. Like, not only is that a great setup for a sequel... But usually it works. Here, it's like, okay, so it's all a dream, but then it has that moment anyway, so I guess it's not. So what the what the it's fuck is like, going on? Like, it, I have, well, you know, he's he's telling that the older brother's friend, whatever the fuck, Jody yeah, or whatever Reggie. his name is. Reggie, yeah, Jody's Ponytail brother. guy that sells ice cream, who's yeah, with, a, who's a the, highlight of this movie. So that, the ice cream, by the way, when there was that, like, dry ice uh, introduction to the tall man in the busy, like, in the middle of the street, mm-hmm. that was so cool. I Like, I vocally went, that's awesome. Like, I wrote a little note down. Um, Because there are some really cool shots here. Like, when the floating orb, there's that POV shot where it's, like, red tinted. And also just some of the, the special effects that are done with, like, the portals. Uh, but, yeah, this movie doesn't make sense. And, like, it's kind of, like totally a scapegoat it's like oh it doesn't make sense because it's a dream but i saw like in terms of just the way it ends it's like yes this is all a dream is all a nightmare that the tall man's still out there we didn't kill him at that at that chasm or whatever he's not actually dead and then yeah you find out then yeah he isn't actually dead it wasn't a nightmare it was like your your body trying to tell you but so, like the kid should have died like as soon as like his head went through the back of the volkswagen beetle it's like he's dead He's so dead. Like when he used a hammer on a door to blow a hole through it. I was like, why that did his was hand blow awesome, up? Though. Like it was you know, awesome. That was but... one of the few moments. Like I, you know, going back to last week, that was your main criticism of uh-huh. Plan Nine was that it's kind of fucking boring. Yeah, this movie is not boring. I no, I felt it was like it really actually dragged on me. It was just like there's so many things about it that are cool that should be fucking awesome, but it takes what like literally I, I you know I actually timed this one. I think it was 37 minutes to see the for that man. eyeball scene to happen oh, with the yeah. orb. Like mm-hmm. that, it's it takes a while for like the really cool shit to happen, and I get it. You know, slow build up. There's a nice score here that's moody, and like there's some good stuff in tone, but a lot of it just lingers and it takes so long to get there and it's not really that interesting later on and it's because it never fucking pays off that I'm just kind of left calling out bullshit at the end and I could not find much to enjoy in this aside from the very few moments that I did in between but yeah like for a 90 minute movie this really dragged on for me this one does drag but I have to disagree I mean we talk about during the gift episode I bought that one for a dollar because of Katie Holmes and literally like the first thing you see in this movie is a sex scene and mm-hmm. you see some tits and it's like right away i tried watching it last night i was a little too tired so i turned it off but i knew right away i was like okay let's do this and like the way that works with like oh it's actually the dude who's like trying to um like he's basically an incubus trying to grab these these other men and and turn them into his slaves i guess there's no explanation for anything in this movie but just the way that that worked like i kind of loved it especially because it it happens like two or three times like maybe the brother died at that bar scene which was so bizarre i had to rewind it to make sure i didn't miss anything it's like he literally pulls up to the bar he walks in the bar he gets his drink Mm -hmm. he talks to the the he she for a minute and then they leave to have sex in a graveyard (laughs) <laughs> Which, by the way, when he's caught, or when his uh, brother catches it, yeah, he just panties throw, him out. Like, yeah, that yeah. was one highlight mm-hmm. for me. Like there was it's, like a lot of those for me though here, like because it, I've heard this be like be described as a film that like escapes convention or like escapes genre because it really it's like it is a comedy. It's, it's such a little an bit easy of a hangout excuse, flick. Though. It's like is it that or like can you chalk these things up to I don't know just bad acting? Like the performances here, like. It's kind of weird, like, deadpan humor, which doesn't Mm -hmm. usually resonate with me, but I did get a Wes Anderson vibe or a Jim Jarmusch vibe just based on the way that they talk. Uh, It it might not be as as energetic as Wes Anderson. Jim Jarmusch is probably closer to just that feel. But, like, yeah, just as far as Mm -hmm. the weirdness, like, and little mannerisms of each character and just the way that they talk, like, uh, you know, and there's that great moment when um, the little brother is explaining what's going on and then he finally shows the hand and the brother just goes like, Okay, I believe you. And I'm, I like believe moments you. like that. I'm just like, yeah, this would straight up like happen in a Wes Anderson film. It'd probably be way more arty in its yeah, composition and all that. Kooky. But still, like just that deadpan delivery, it's totally there throughout too. Like, I couldn't not laugh. Like this is like, you were talking about Plan Nine, how you were laughing throughout, like so bad yeah. it's good type of thing. Like 
even just with one person when I was watching this. I, as soon like when they're in the psychic before he even before the the girl even opens the door she's like hey tommy like she he just i was like oh is it because it's a psychic house like it, i couldn't i was looking for answers and i was just going with it i was like whatever whatever but you get like just to like point towards your jim jarmish like wes anderson weird like little mumble gore thing for some reason when when jody and reggie are having their like guitar session mm-hmm. out of the middle of nowhere and then reggie's like we're hot as love Wait, what? Like I've, I don't I'm, know. Like, what's it, that even mean? There's a lot of <laughs> moments like that. I mean, the, and that going back to that scene, that was one of the moments that I actually kind of like. Mm-hmm. Generally, though, I I think here I only liked it on principle because I like those small little moments where people are like, even in whatever genre film, they're able to just, you know, still hang out and be casual. And here, like, it was one of the livelier moments for me, even though there's a weird callback to that in the third act which yeah clearly d- doesn't at all add up with based on what happens with that like uh it's probably just going hey you know we got this cool score which bites a little too heavily from halloween but it's still like its own thing i i think this is kind of song like if you were at like a disco or something it came on and be like oh yeah i love this one what's what's it from oh yeah that movie where where you got the the brothers going it's like that double reaction shot in the graveyard too where you get Jody see the, like the the boobs and he's like wow like he's <laughs> Owen Wilson and then you get uh, the, the little kid Tommy do the exact same thing like a second later I'd never seen a double reaction like that especially for that weird and then yeah it's like you said like he's, he's like got the panties in his mouth mm-hmm. and for some reason the, the brother's like oh let me run away he's from this free oh, sex go on that. this the sure thing yeah let me put my clothes on like, and, and then just Jason. like th- then he catches the brother's like hey what were you doing it's like I was look there was something out there like, yeah there's I, something out there I heard voices there were and, sounds yeah it, and, and he was he should have been like were you trying to watch me? Yeah, like he's bone? not angry. He's just like, go home, okay? Like, it, just, going back to the Plan 9 thing, like, I do think, yeah, you know, I was laughing with that, where maybe you not as much, but I did have the benefit of having an audience there. Here, I would have had a much better time, like, that's for sure, because I was definitely, like, chuckling in some moments, but I was falling asleep in, like, some others. And I don't know, if it's supposed to be deadpan humor, you know, that's something that just for me does not work as much that's one of the reasons i don't like arrested development and i never stuck Mm -hmm. with it uh but i mean yeah like it just part of the boredom for me is that it's like everyone's on ambient here a little bit but i i I can't say energy is what's got what's in here but there's like chutzpah like there's something there are cool like little vibes and things it's just it doesn't really add up to anything and you know just that explanation of like oh but this movie is supposed to be a dream it's like anything that's a weird and surreal you can get like as weird and crazy as you want in general but there are usually characters that are your gateway into that mm-hmm. and their acknowledgement of the weird shit that's happening syncs up with yours and like seeing them react fearfully to what's going on and being as confused as you are like that's that's kind of how you get invested in horror movies I just I did not have that here really. I like I was kind of laughing the whole time going like why the fuck are there sand people in this? Like <laughs> Right there were Jawas. Is, is that They're the totally teleportation Jawas. into that galaxy from f- far far away? <laughs> like they totally were Jawas honestly. They're Jawas, like, man. Like when they're on that planet with the barrels that that was Tatooine. That had like, to be. It's like they they just saw Star Wars like that was a hit. That's that's reuse some of their some of their costumes. Um and then even worse there's like the Harry Potter photograph when you realize the tall man's been in the town since forever. But that and was a pretty cool effect, though. It was a cool yeah. effect. Like, I, I wrote, like, a short story or, like, a short script that uses that as a plot device. But I was like, why is he in this thrift shop? He picks up this photograph and it comes to life. And those were, like, the breadcrumbs lead me to realizing or, like, being okay with it being a dream. Because just... The way that scenes bleed into one another and the kind of transitions and the not jump cuts necessarily, but the time jumps for sure. It's like, is this the same day as this two days later? Like, how did he get in the car? Uh, did, did, how, did Like, why didn't the car falling on him kill him? Um, like, getting hit in the toe with the hammer didn't feel that bad. Like, so many things happen so quickly that it's, they're just kind of glazed over. Like, they, they jump to the next thing. And it does kind of flow in the same way a dream does. Like, you're ever having... Uh, like you're you're sleeping and for some reason like you know you're at a baseball game and the next second you're at a casino and yeah, the next like second you just you're like randomly mm-hmm. going to locations and you don't yeah. really think about it at the time you just kind of go with the flow naturally or I, either that's what alerts you that's a dream and then you become aware of it and you're kind of uh, depending on how you dream but yeah 
it's also, you know, explanations like that are part of the reasons why, you know, David Lynch's stuff, for example, just doesn't resonate with me or that I need to give that a shot. So well, maybe that is a case of personal taste. But then for me, it does come down to the fact that, like, there's all this stuff that's set up that there is that feeling, like, especially in that third act, because that third act is actually really fucking fun. And it doesn't drag on for me there at all. Like, that's where things pick up. But yeah, well, it then becomes... it just doesn't come together to really build up to anything. And I know there's sequels, so maybe there's some stronger <laughs> world building that's enhanced later on. But It's a total cock tease. You get this really interesting dimension, and I want to know about this tall guy. Like, was he a human? Is he something completely different? I mean, he obviously bleeds mustard. But, like, how did his fingers come back? Why is he trapping these people? Like, there's like, four sequels at this point. There has yeah. to be some more fleshed out version of what's going on here, what, like, of what the entire point is. And it's like, especially knowing that there's a franchise behind this just kind of negates the idea that this is a dream to me. It's a clear mythos. Like, maybe it starts with a dream and then becomes something else, or maybe it's like a Nightmare on Elm Street thing where it, it, it revolves around dreams. Like, maybe the guy mm -hmm. gets stronger because of the dream world. Like, maybe it's Morpheus, the you know, the king of dreamland. And I, I was okay with not trying to look for the answers after a certain amount of time because it is kind of fun. Like, when the chase starts, you know, it ends kind of just super stupidly like in the way that a nightmare would end like you don't really stop the monsters just like we're gonna go to this mine shaft and we're gonna put him in there and then i'm gonna push the rocks down he's gonna be trapped it's like um okay i guess yeah that that's one way to stop the boogeyman but then, like stupid stuff i'm sorry your your best friend was probably killed his his ice cream truck was flipped over you find this yellow blood in the back of the truck mm -hmm. and then you go to the the whatchamacallit the Fuck not, funeral not the, home. Yeah, the funeral home. Yeah, and then he just and he's just up. he's alive. Oh yeah, I saw that girl and this girl. Oh, and, and that I girl. took them out to the back. Yeah, and saved, they're fine. We're all they're we're totally all good. Fine. We're all good, guys. Like a that's, prime that's... example of telling, not showing. <laughs> it's not even telling, not showing. It's like doing nothing. It's how why, would you believe? Like I, you want to suspend disbelief because you want your friend to be alive. But why wasn't he cut in half like the other guy from the first sex scene? Like, <laughs> like it's it's so weird I don't, that I kind of yeah, like, like the, it. It's well, I I wish I could, but like, there's just no consistent like building up just that, you know, that feeling like like, like that there is some going on, like questioning what's happening and trying to figure that out, and then giving me nothing like that. Just that it, is like you know an unfulfilling yeah. experience for me, and that's really what left me pissed off at the end of the day is that yeah, there's some cool things happening in here aesthetically, but not enough for me personally to recommend it to the point where I, like I was mm. engaged like I was just very distant and I tried my best to stick with it because I I really you know with the reputation that this had in the past year especially with Bad Robot putting this together it's like I want to you know find something to connect with like any movie at all that you're watching you don't yeah. want it to be a waste of your time you want to find something to like it or at least to, for it to give you some some that can resonate with you and for horror films they probably have like you know the ho most hardcore fans like the people that like truly appreciate them the most because it's not uh, really musicals. Well, they, they have or <laughs> i don't that seems more like a niche like horror they pay has, money how, to see musicals live how am i trying to put this though <laughs> i know what you're saying that's it, brought up like it's, yeah it's they, like they have those you, underground mm -hmm. fans that appreciate it because it's a genre that at least in the critical sphere you know like it's even dead, a, yeah. as far as award season and all that not really that well respected like e even if it's a horror flick that you know people still love in the genre and it tries to get nominated for the best foreign oscar uh rarely gets that recognition if ever there's more people championing this stuff and it's like i i want to understand what it is that they're seeing but even when i'm like seeing stuff like you know it being a dream because you're not the first person to say that but mm -hmm. just that sentiment being echoed on like positive reviews on letterbox it's just i don't feel it and it it bumps me out but I have to, like, if, you know, so, like, yeah, obviously at this point, I wouldn't buy it for a dollar. This, like, I'm actually really fucking negative on it. And, like, I I hope that somewhere down the line there could be a screening of this with the crowd where I could enjoy it better because I could see myself laughing at it more and more. Th there's so much here that's, like, really fucking cool, but, like, it just doesn't mix well, you know? Like, I, I never really understand what's actually going on. I don't understand much about the villain. Like, and then that bullshit ending just fucking, yeah. like, really just really made liked. me feel like it was a waste of talent and cool moments. This isn't, like, bad as in, like, fuck, this is terrible. This is, like, bad as in, for me, it just really let me down on this one. But hopefully there could be a screening in the future where I might change my mind or see something else.
I can see that. If I watched it alone, I would probably be far more negative than I was, but I didn't, and you know, it kind of turned into like a date movie. But at the same time, there's just something not good about it. I'm not going to recommend <laughs> it either. Like I, I doubt Bixby Snyder would buy this one, and I won't either. But it, even still, like the, the even if there's only that one gore effect it was cool enough like you know the guy dies and he fucking yeah, pisses like, his pants the like, fact that people love it and they use that moment like as a way to like describe like what's so awesome it. about it. it's like mm-hmm. i have to believe that there's more to it than that if there's this many people that are genuinely positive on it yeah i knew nothing about it other than it's supposed to be really great it's supposed to uh con like you can't define it as horror it's like more than that and that there's floating orbs that kill people and there's one floating orb that kills someone uh, maybe it's like, oh, you know, in the sequels it becomes a bigger thing. But what I did enjoy was kind of the palpable atmosphere, and part of that is just the theme song, or the rather the scoring. Mm-hmm. But like, it's a it, really good tune. It, it just the like the color palette, like everything about it. The even the kids being so fucking weird, and and the working in the car, and the weird girl at the bar, and like all these little things, even if it is just a, a nightmare or a dream, which, yeah, like you said, that is a, a Lynchian thing, too. Um, and I generally am not a fan of him doing that or his doing that. But I don't know. Like, I, I kind of liked it. I didn't like it in the way that I liked Evil Dead or Brain Dead or even, uh, was it like two years ago now that we coincidentally saw Hal Sue on the same day? Like, that <laughs> is the completely. 100 percent bonkers that is clearly bad j-horror insane, yeah like, like that is so crazy you can't have a bad time and this is like one foot in that door and one foot in let's be really serious and try to scare people and there was never a moment here that i felt scared like i saw it during the daytime i was with someone but even still it it wasn't quite horror like i understood that that's what genre it would fall closest to but it wasn't traumatizing like this this dude like running around masquerading as a woman to you know seduce men into being his slaves for some reason that doesn't even make sense it's like any way to like make it seem spooky and like it's a it's an intimidating figure that's there sure but at least make some sense out of it i i never understand why he's doing what he's doing Ever throughout the I thing. think that's kind of the beauty of him because I think he is an iconic villain even if he doesn't have a name if he has very minimal dialogue it's not even the things he say he, things he says it's his screen presence like if you saw a picture of him you would know automatically you've seen this movie like oh yeah that's the tall dude from phantasm like he is a big bad in, in a certain way and maybe that is the power of this I'm not upset that I saw it I'm happier I saw this than I am that I saw plan nine yeah like I, you know, I I wanted to see that at a certain point, but this was like this was a good one to take off my list of shame. Like it, it was a perfect fit for the kind of movies that I've been watching this month. You know, if you haven't seen this and you are a poor aficionado, I think it it's worth a watch. Like it's at least something you can talk about because a good movie, yeah, you might be able to talk about a bad movie. You can definitely talk about, it, but something like this where it's like, what happened? What is this? Like when you have all these kinds of questions, it does linger. And that is something like a beauty of cinema. If you can create something like this that escapes just being, yeah, thumbs up, thumbs down. Like if it's, I don't know what to think about that. Like there's there's something beautiful about that. The most beautiful thing for me to say about this movie is that a restoration like this can exist. <laughs> really, that's it. <laughs> I mean, in, in all truth though, it is really, really cool that that version of the movie exists the way that it does that it can be preserved that way that any movie from that time period can look this fucking good because i like it is really well framed and really well lit like there's some really the, an image that i love is that one spotlight where the ice cream truck is just yeah you know, the ice like cream. yeah and how that's shooting out and like how creepy that looks almost like it's something uh you know that predates uh you know anything that like that came from the 80s from spielberg like et or some just some certain images that echo that it, like that's the best thing that I have to say about this movie is I genuinely like just the effort that was put into this restoration and just how good a lot of these shots look. Thanks for listening. We hope it's been a pleasure. If you like this show and you want to hear more of our wonderful voices on a weekly basis, check out Two Cents. I'll recap what's happened in film, TV, and tech news. We're also on the titular Dollar Review Show, a spoiler-free critique of new releases or anything we've discovered on our own, whether that be TV, music, etc. You can find all of our content at dollarreviews.net. 
Follow us on Twitter or like us on Facebook at Dollar Reviews. And we're also on Google Play Music, iTunes, Pocket Cast, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, YouTube, just about anywhere on the internet with hours of content available to you for free. But for those of you that feel that the show is worth your dollar, you can send us a donation at patreon.com slash dollar reviews. Contributions not only earn our undying love, but they also make it possible for us to improve our recording equipment and to give you the highest quality episodes possible. But more importantly, they'd be helping us acquire the content to review. You know, trips to the multiplex are expensive, and the more donations we receive, the more films we can review for your listening pleasure. If you listen somewhere we're currently not available, you'd like to contribute some talking points, send a debt to cinema request, or even if you just want to laugh at us, you can do so by reaching out to us on social media or send an email to brian at dollarreviews.net. Or you can email me as well, steve at dollarreviews.net. You can follow me personally on Twitter at Brian Gillis, that's B-R-Y-O-N-G-I-L-L-I-S, and now you know how to spell the email too, and also under the same name on the Love You site, Letterbox, which acts as my film diary, where I rate films that I'm watching, write the occasional review, and even sometimes compile lists. You can also find me on Twitter at S underscore MTX, and also follow my film diary at Letterbox under the same name, where I log everything I watch, and sometimes write brief reviews. That's it for this week. Until next time, keep the change.